Hi guys, it's Kelly Lanavola here, and I am so excited to be doing my first video for Neat and Tangled. Today I'm going to be using um, your, what is this, my favorite nut, the stamp set and the dies. So I'm working on uh, cans and watercolor paper. I thought that it would be a super cute idea to just kind of have a this um, little squirrel <laughs> couple in this big acorn um, on a green background, kind of to give the illusion of them like sitting in a tree. So I pulled out my Zig Clean Color Markers and I'm going to use that to do my background. I stamped down um, the image just so I could get an idea of how far out my background needed to go. But that's not going to be the one that I'm, that's going to be colored at the end. So I'm not being real careful about where I'm putting my color. Uh, I'm using just uh, my regular Ranger brushes and then I'm going to kind of just um, after I've scribbled down the color I'm just going to lay down like a little channel of water. With watercolor paper your pigment's only going to go as far as the paper is wet. So early on I just set boundaries about where how far out I want my water to go and then I'll go in and kind of touch the pigment. So usually I'll bring the channel in to where the pigment is and then just kind of let it do its thing. One of the things that um, I love about watercolor, even if you're not watercoloring in the traditional sense, like obviously I'm using Zig Clean Color Markers, which are a wonderful tool, but it's not traditional watercolor, um, is to let the water do the work. That's what the, the blending and the, the blooming that they do and the way that the colors lay. Those are all things that are really unique to watercolor and that's why you're using that medium. So just kind of trust it. I had a really hard time with watercolor when I first started uh, because I wanted to control it. Not controllable. <laughs> you just have to embrace it for what it is. So I'm using just a dry paper towel to kind of blot up any areas where my water is pooling. I did not tape this down. Um, so I know I'm going to have just a little bit of warping and my water is going to be running all over the place. Uh, but I didn't have a, I didn't have any tape. <laughs> like, I'll just be straight with you. I didn't have any tape. So it just kind of is what it is. So I'm drawing down that first layer and then I'm going to go back in and add a second layer just to kind of intensify the colors. Um, all in all, I ended up adding three. I'm only showing you two because I'm doing the same thing each time. And really I'm not being very careful about how I'm putting down my color. I'm just really just scribbling it on. Um, with watercolors, you can layer the colors. So you can see like more toward the top of the acorn, it's more yellow and I'm bringing in um, some darker, more traditional like Kelly green colors. And those will layer on top of each other and make a completely different color. And that's super cool. Just know when you're layering that you're going to um, have hard and soft edges. If you want um, softer edges, then you're going to want to uh, do quite a bit more blending with the water. I was not as particular on my second go round because I knew I was going to be very particular on my third. And then I'm just drawing it down in between each layer. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to put it underneath a heavy book and set it aside to dry to kind of minimize that warping. Now I've stamped the image again on some Nina Solar White and I'm going to go ahead and color that with Copics. Whenever I'm coloring anything, um, if I'm not 100% positive of how it should look, uh, I Google it. That just is what works for me. And so with acorns, they have a ton of texture on the top, the cap of it, but the bottom is really smooth and uh, striated. So that's kind of the look that I'm going for. I wanted it to be shiny on the right hand side and then that is why I left that large white block. If you've never watched any of my videos before, um, I usually start with my lightest color and work my way out to my darkest and then from darkest back into my lightest. The reason I do that is because I in particular am heavy handed if I start with my darks, but there is no right or wrong way to do this. You do whatever you're comfortable with. I'm using a really light hand and soft flicking motions and I am flicking the colors a little higher than maybe I normally would because I am going for that striated look. I want those stripes to be, um, well I don't know if I want them to be prevalent but I want them to be noticeable, not as subtle because it's going to create the texture for the bottom half of my acorn. 
So I'm just moving along. Um, the edge would be darker, so I'm adding a little shading to that. And then because my light source is in the top right hand corner, I color almost all of my images that way. Uh, it, the left hand side of my egg corner is going to be darker. So you'll see as I'm adding the shading, I'm being a bit more heavy handed with the darker colors on the left hand side. As far as Copics go, whether you're more comfortable pulling the pen towards yourself or pushing it away from yourself, don't be afraid to pull um, to turn your paper to kind of suit your own needs. There's nothing wrong with coloring it upside down. You'll see throughout my videos I do it a ton and that's just what works best for me. So don't feel like you can't move it around to get a better angle. Totally fine. So now I'm going to start filling in that large white area um, on the second pass through. I don't want my highlight to be that large but I also didn't want it to get eaten up by all of the other shading that I'm doing. You can see in here um, as I'm doing the shading I'm leaving a little bit that actually is white and the parts that I filled in don't have nearly as much texture. I'm going to go back in and kind of fix that add in uh, just a little bit more so that it makes sense with the rest of it. But all in all I was really happy with the way that um, the I say striations, there's a possibility that you don't necessarily know what that means. The lines, the lines should be visible. So then for the middle where it's open for the squirrels to sit, there would be shading coming from the back on the lip of the acorn and then the shading would be coming from the front on the inside of the acorn. Because if your light was looking at it, it would be darker up close and the light would hit more on the back rim and then you would just reverse it for the top because the, again, they would be lighter a little bit further away. For the top, I knew I wanted to have a lot of texture. I knew I wanted it to look different than the bottom, how smooth the bottom looks. So instead of coloring the whole image um, I am leaving another highlight as well, but instead of coloring the whole image completely in, I am, but I'm doing it with little half moons. And so you can see even with the lightest color, there's already just a little bit of texture there, but we're really going to play that up as we keep adding in the colors. So it's just little half moons, right? I, there is no, <laughs> I don't want to say there, there really isn't any rhyme or reason to it. I'm just trying to fill in the area with the little half moons. Right now it looks kind of um, silly, but as we go, that texture is going to keep building. So I am still working the same thing from my lightest color out to my darkest color. And here's one of those situations where because um, we're not blending the colors traditionally, we're going to have to use the colors to create our shadows. So all the way up until E35, I am pretty much adding the color all over. Once I get to the E37, I'm only going to be adding this to where I want the really shadowed areas to be. So the left hand side and then behind where the squirrels are. And then even more concentrated with the E39. Because these are creating our shadows even though we're using... Uh, regular colors to do that and then I'm going to do the same thing that I would do no matter how I was coloring it to go back out to the lightest color and just really blend those in and each time I'm drawing you know the little half moons it it is sped up a little bit so it's probably a little bit harder to see but I'm doing the same thing over and over and over and over again and I am putting my lightest ones over my darkest ones. Copics are transparent so lighter colors will pick up darker colors and it's going to create um, more of that texture. So once I was done with the regular colors of it I wanted to go in back in with my zero marker and this again is going to create more texture. I'm not so much doing the half moons with the zero marker as I am like almost making little curly lines. I just wanted to put uh, color down just kind of ra or the colorless blender anyway down randomly to really create that texture. We're going to come back to the cap of the acorn again but first we're going to color the leaves. So this is kind of my favorite go-to um, bright green color combination. 
the leaf in the back um, has, so the top leaf is laying on top of the leaf in the back. So there would be shadows where that is. And then I decided I was going to add the shadows more to the center of my leaf and then also where it connects to the acorn. Any point, um, any area where two points meet is automatically going to be darker. So keep that in mind when you're doing your shading. And I mean, you could have shaded this pretty much any way you wanted to. This just made the most sense to me since I was going to be coming out from the center anyhow with where it met the top of the acorn. And I'm doing it the same way that I did the bottom. I'm using some light flicking motions, really light hand. Then we're going to get into the squirrel. So there is a lot of brown. There's a lot of brown on this card. I have to tell you, I love, um, I love neat and tangled stamps. It's, I was thrilled when they asked me to join the team. Here's us adding more of that texture again, and I'm using a cooler, um, brown with the same little curly strokes. But anyway, um, I was so thrilled when she asked me to join the team. And then, um, I really loved this stamp set. But then after I was done, I was like, dude, I made my debut with a green and brown card. Like, I love color so much. And this is, Kelly, this is what you came out of the gates swinging with. I still think that it's super cute. I just really wish I found a way to incorporate a little bit more color. But since we're going to be together all year long now, I, I feel like I have a, a chance to redeem myself and bring in some rainbows at a later date. So, anyway... I wanted to, because there is so much brown, I wanted to break it up. So I did pick a, another brown family, but this one is way cooler. If you're unsure of what that means, cooler means that there's more of a, a gray base and warmer means there's more of a red base. So the acorn is very warm. The squirrel is very cool. He is, I mean, he's otherwise super cool as well, but color wise, very cool. So I'm doing the same thing with the flicking motions. I feel like I've said that a hundred times. I'm doing the same thing. I do the same thing all the time, folks. Um, but anyway, his where his head is tucked over his body, it would be darker. Where his body's tucked into her body, it would be darker. And where they're coming up out of the squirrel, also darker. His hand's on top of her hand, so he's going to have the lightest highlight on top of his hand. And then I used um, just a little bit of pink for the ears. I picked another color family to color her in with. I thought it would be different enough that it would stand out from the acorn. I was wrong. Um, she almost blends right in, so I'll teach you a trick to fix that later. So anyway, I'm doing the same thing. Um, I'm using light flicking motions, trying to, um, you know, just create a little bit of texture in their fur. While I'm coloring this, I realized that I actually missed his hand. So uh, I'm just going to go back in real quick and get that with the cool. His arm is around her on her shoulder. Um, so that is his hand. That is not part of her body. So now that we fix that, we can proceed with the rest of the coloring. Her tail is behind her. So that should be just a little bit darker because she's standing in front of it. Anything that's darker automatically falls into the background. So that's a really good way to give yourself um, a way to create dimension without a ton of work, just your regular color choices. So, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. I also added some shading underneath where her tail is curved just to kind of accentuate that curl and that there would be some, you know, shadows underneath it that her, her, cur uh, her curl... Her tail is really full and then, you know, just blending back out the same way, still coloring as if the light source is on the top right hand. So that area will be lighter, the, that side of her face and then that side of her tail. So here I really wanted um, her to stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to go back in and, and I guess intensify her tail with those cool colors that I used on him. This is just gonna give us, see how it automatically falls to the background. Then I'm gonna go back in with that colorless blender just to kind of create some sort of, some, some sort of texture, some sort of feathering, some sort of something, so it didn't just look flat. Then I realized she totally blends into the background. So now I'm going back with the colors I initially used for the acorn and I'm trying to set her up uh, with a little shadow in the background just so she pops forward a little bit more. Um, for the two darkest colors, the 
uh, 39 and the 37 I just did flicking motions and then when I brought in the 35 I started doing those same curly motions to just kind of blend it into the rest of the lid and so I felt like she stood out a little bit more and I was happier with that I'm going to use a white gel pen to just um, bolster up those white highlights that I left and then I outline all of my images I knew I wanted to cut this out with the die I recommend outlining your images before you do the die um, and I, she just wasn't sticking out enough. So I went back in with the lightest color of that 71 and just went over her completely. And it doesn't undo the shading that we did, but it does give her a different color. So she stands out more from the acorn. So I'm going to line up my die. I normally am a one layer um, card lover, uh, but I just, this is so easy to do with the die. It just really is. I wanted a little bit more on my background now that it's dry so I'm using mowed lawn and this little heart that's included in the set and some of the hearts I'm stamping full strength and some of them I'm stamping second generation um, you know just to give a little bit more interest to the background these two little squirrels in love I love the little font that's in here it's a scripty little font I'm going to be using some black Simon stamp ink to put that down it's one of my favorite inks for sentiments it's super crisp and this is a tinier sentiment, um, so they work really well together. I'm going to pop up my egg corn with some scotch um, what, foam tape. That's what it's called, Kelly foam tape. Just so it kind of sets, you know, it pops up off of the background. And then once I have it where, I, and I struggled with for some reason, I don't know why, getting it right in the proper place. Uh, once I have it where I am happy with it, I'm going to go ahead and push that down. Then to add some sparkle, we're going to use some uh, clear sequins from Meet and Tangled. I love this little uh, clear pack. You get a bunch of different sizes. It works really well for me because I love clear sequins. Then just to add a little bit more shimmer, I'm going to use clear Wink of Stella on their ears. And then I also filled in some of the hearts in the background. Be aware though that because these Zig Clean color markers are water-based, it will pick up some of the pigment, just an FYI. So that's the entire card. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you learned something and I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.